Bryce. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Good morning, everyone. This is Pastor Kent. I'm coming to you live and in living color. I want to talk to you today about Thanksgiving and the coming feast of rededication. Thanksgiving and the coming feast of rededication. So if everyone would just stretch hands toward me, we prefer to rightly divide his word today. Father, I thank and praise you for an opportunity once again to open up the bread of life. I pray as always that you would sit a watch over my mouth. Let me speak the purest sound doctrine of your word, the thing that will edify your body and exalt and magnify your name in all the earth. And Father, we truly pray that this could be a time and a season and a day when the saints of God, according to the prophecy of Daniel, would be strong and do exploits in the power of the Holy Spirit. We ask all of these things in the precious name of Jesus yes. and all the three said. Amen. 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 Thanksgiving coming to rededication. I want to start with a little bit of history. Um, Thanksgiving at the National Feast Day was first announced by George Washington November 26, 1789. His, his exact statement announcing this was a day of public thanksgiving and prayer to be observed by acknowledging with grateful hearts the many and signal favors of Almighty God. The next official pronouncement from a president comes from Abraham Lincoln in 1863, in which this is the first time Thanksgiving was made uniform throughout all of the states. And he said he wanted it to be a way of bringing unity into the states, both north and south. Now, he did this thanks to the unmitigating campaign of Sarah Josepha Hale, who wrote to politicians for 40 years to create a National Day of Thanksgiving for America. Wow. And then the other president I want to mention is Franklin Delano Roosevelt, who in 1941 unified Thanksgiving as the last day in November. Now here's a sad fact, and um, I learned more about it as I prepared for this message than I ever knew before. Hmm. The true history of Thanksgiving is not that rather idyllic um, Native American pilgrim story where they get together, although that did occur. Swanto um, managed to survive the smallpox epidemic that wiped out so many of his people. And uh, not only that, but you also had uh, the destruction of the slavery and slave of Native American people. And the Peacock War, which from what I understand was particularly brutal, um, the first Thanksgiving uh, then that was described by the pilgrims at that point was to celebrate the massacre of the Pequot tribe. What? Um, they, they did not have, the tribe had no understanding of the European sense of um, eminent domain, right of conquer, whatever. They considered themselves neighbors to the pilgrims that arrived. And uh, the governor, I forget of which state, I want to say Massachusetts, but I'm not 100 percent, so I don't want to misquote. But he sent his soldiers uh, to the Pequot village. They called out the men, and they slaughtered the men, and then burned the village to the ground with women and children live in it. That's not the Thanksgiving that we hear about. That's not the beautiful picture of Squanto and the pilgrims, who he saved, by the way, by teaching them how to farm uh, in the new land. Um, that, like I said, that did occur, but as a result of what actually was proclaimed the first day of Thanksgiving, this I did not know, to this day, Native American tribes of New England have a national day of mourning because of the slaughter of the Peacock tribe. I never heard about that. Wow. And so it really behooves us as believers to walk in truth, amen? Yes. So we understand what the truth of these things 
Uh, absolutely is, so that we can walk in our role as saints of the Most High God. So, uh, as they say, I didn't turn to Scripture. Open your Bibles to Leviticus chapter 7, where we begin to talk about Thanksgiving. Leviticus chapter 7. And uh, I'm so excited to see some joining us on Periscope. God bless you if you just joined us. We're talking today about Thanksgiving and the coming feast of rededication. And uh, we're very excited about the word of the Lord that's coming forth today. Okay, uh, Leviticus chapter 7, and we'll begin at verse 11. And by the way, this is the first time that the term Thanksgiving is mentioned in the Bible. And so all the things that pertain to the principle of first mention pertain here. This is the law of the sacrifice of peace offerings, which he shall offer <coughs> unto the Lord. If he offer it for a thanksgiving, then he will offer it with the sacrifice of thanksgiving, unleavened cakes mingled with oil, unleavened wafers anointed with oil, and cakes mingled with oil of fine flour fried. Beside the cakes, he shall offer for his offering leavened bread with the sacrifice of thanksgiving of his peace offerings, and he shall offer it one out of the whole oblation for an eve offering unto the Lord. And it shall be the priest that sprinkleth the blood of the peace offering. Now, the, the point here is that thanksgiving also includes sacrifice. Very important that you get that. And the flesh of the sacrifice of his peace offerings for thanksgiving shall, shall be eaten the same day that it is offered. He shall not eat any of it until the morning. But if the sacrifice of his offering be a vow, or a voluntary offering, it shall be eaten the same day that he offered this sacrifice. And on the morrow also the remainder of it shall be eaten. The matter of the flesh, or the remainder of the flesh of the sacrifice on the third day shall be burnt with fire. So again, just like uh, so many of the feast days, the sacrifice is to be consumed on the day of the feast. Now, the word thanksgiving here is the Hebrew word kadah. It means an extension of the hand. It refers to adoration, confession, but also a sacrifice of praise. Now, why is it a sacrifice of praise? If, if we understand the, the whole concept of sacrifice, why is it a sacrifice of praise? Because you praise God in the midst of everything. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God concerning you. Amen? Yes. So it's not for everything, but in everything. Big distinction. And by the way, the root word to toda is yada, which also is a holding out of the hands, a revering of worship with extended hands, but it also includes bemoaning, wringing your hands, and here's a pivotal point, making confession. Hmm. Making confession and then praise. So the, the whole concept here of Thanksgiving is a confession before Almighty God uh, followed with or enhanced by your praise. Amen? Yes. I want to challenge everyone in the sound of my voice, those who may watch this later when uh, it's posted uh, on the internet, on Facebook, which I uh, traditionally do or on our website. I want to challenge all those who name the name of Jesus this on this Thanksgiving. Add a prayer for forgiveness of unconfessed sins especially those unconfessed sins against the Northeastern tribes. I remember when the apostles gathered, uh, we were in Oklahoma, and someone had made a reverse trail of tears out to Oklahoma, asking forgiveness for what was done to the Cherokee Nation. And that individual came to the apostles gathering. There was a, a powerful anointing that hit, and there was a prophetic word, which I, I don't recall off the top of my head, it was a very strong word. And what ended up happening is when they got to the Middle American truck, the Turkey Nation, in Oklahoma, the chief brought out a deer skin dating back to the Trail of Tears. And the deer skin was given by the spiritual head of the Cherokee at that time. And he basically said, unless repentance was made for the Trail of Tears, that America would be under a curse. Powerful, powerful. I remember the impact that it had with all the apostles and prophets who had gathered there. And we prayed mightily to the Lord 
uh, forgiveness of that. And, and that was just awesome. So many people joining us. I don't have time to thank you all, but God bless you. Welcome uh, to this message. And again, I'm talking about Thanksgiving and the first feast of dedication. So I challenge all saints to pray on this Thanksgiving for the forgiveness of unconfessed sins against the Northeast tribes. This was against the Cherokee nation that they prayed. I want to pray for forgiveness of what was done to the Northeast tribes. And worship and adore God and thank Him and give Him praise yes. that we're still free in this nation yes. to worship and adore God as we feel led by His Spirit. That's huge. It's not the case around the world. Look at what's going on in so many places in the world where persecution is on the rise, especially in the 1040 window where Muslims are slaughtering Christians at an alarming rate, slaughtering Yazidis. If they find any Jews, they slaughter them unmercifully. And the slaughter they have ordained for the children, I can't even speak it. It's so horrific. Uh, but you can do your own research and find out what's going on. If you don't weep, you don't have a soul. Okay, so now, as this year is rapidly drawing to a close, uh, Pastor Mary and I were, were talking about it. We can't believe how rapidly the time has sped this year. Yeah. So as it's drawn to the close, there's only one more feast day to be celebrated on the Jewish feast day, and that's the Feast of Hanukkah. And this year, in a strange way, it overlays Christmas. Hanukkah begins on December 25th. Now, because of the animosity between Christians and Jews, the Roman church tried to separate the feast days so that they didn't occur at the same time. This year, Hanukkah, the Feast of Dedication, and Christmas occurs on the same time. So, this is the last festival of the year. It is also called the Festival of Lights, or the Feast of Dedication. And interestingly enough, this is not one of God's ordained festivals, but it's one of the festivals ordained by the people. And people say, well, it's not in the Bible. It is in the Bible. First of all, the origin of it is found in the Apocrypha. Um, I am not a scholar of the Apocrypha, but from what I'm learning, um, I, I think there were reasons uh, the Apocrypha was kept out of the canon of Scripture. Um, and it's not necessarily all good reasons. I think there are some truths in the Apocrypha that people wanted to avoid. Uh, that's a whole other story. We'll discuss that another day. But it's also found in the Gospel of John. So turn with me to John chapter 10. And we're going to read about the Feast of Dedication. John's Gospel, the 10th chapter. We're going to pick it up in verse 6. Because I want to set the stage and put it in context for what God's had on my heart today. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. Now he just gave them the parable, the good shepherd. So because they didn't understand it in verse 7, then Jesus said to them again, Verily, I, verily I say unto you, truly, truly, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. Pay close attention, body of Christ, because we got to learn to hear his voice. There are all kinds of voices out there speaking in the name of the Lord, but they're not necessarily his voice. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out, and find pasture. The thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. As I've always taught you, this is the term zoe, which is the God kind of life. So I don't know how you can have more abundance of God, the Almighty, but this is the promise of God, that that God kind of life is to be given to us and given to us in great abundance. How wonderful is that? Amen. I have a good shepherd. Good shepherd is like for the sheep. The hireling fleeth because he is the hireling thing and careth not for the sheep. You know, um, I, I hesitate to say this, but can I add there's a lot of hirelings in the ministry today? 
And uh, I say it without pure contradiction because it's true. He that is a hireling and not the shepherd whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth, and the wolf catches them and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth because he is a hireling and careth not for the sheep. Um, I just heard a story that, that is tragic about such a hireling who um, has put a whole flock bondage to self-aggrandize himself. I, I can just, I marvel that the judgment of God lingers for such men. That just goes to show you that God is gracious. I'm the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. We want to be known we want to be known. We want to understand what it is to be known of God and to know God. As a matter of fact, the, the scripture that I mentioned a little while ago from Daniel, the people that know their God will be strong in your exploit. Hmm. Even as the Father knoweth me, even so I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep, and other sheep I have which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there should be one fold and one shepherd. There it is right there. One of the biggest problems that the Jewish people had at that time was dealing with the fact that Jesus spoke to Samaritans, that Jesus spoke of other prophets. Jewish people at that day had the opinion of or and no more. Their attitude was they were the only ones to be saved. Therefore, that my father loved me because I laid down my life I might take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have the power to lay it down, and I have the power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my heart. There is the most powerful testimony of the resurrection before the resurrection that you will find in the New Testament. It is exceptionally powerful. It's a very strong word. Jesus declares, not only is he laying his life down, but he can take his life again that it is in his power that he would rise from the dead. How awesome. Wow. Yes. There was a division, therefore, again among the Jews for these saints. Many of them said, He yeah, hath the devil and is mad. Why hear ye him? Others said, These are not the words of him that hath the devil. Can the devil open the eyes of the blind? Now, the wonderful thing about that is there were people who acknowledged the gifts of healing could only come from the Father. The sad thing is that there were those who were borderline blasphemy of the Holy Spirit by saying Jesus had a devil. Um, that's as close as you ever want to come to blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, and I don't want to go there. It was at Jerusalem, the Feast of Dedication, and it was winter. So we're talking the end of the year, Jerusalem, and the Feast of Dedication. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's court. So Jesus celebrated the Feast of Dedication, even though it wasn't a God-ordained feast, but rather a feast that celebrated the rededication of the temple. Remember that, because we're going to see it again in a minute. Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, How long dost thou because thou, if thou be Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. So once again, he, knowing their thoughts, is saying, didn't you just say that the healing of the blind and the deaf and the dumb and the lame, didn't you just say that isn't the work of the devil? That's the work of my Father, and that's the work that I do that testifies on Christ. Mm. That's basically what he's saying here. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life. This is uh, something we call the, the uh, uh, twofold guarantee. I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. So now Jesus is declaring clearly, I'm the Son of God. My Father and I are one and the same. And you know what happens. The Jews took up stones to stone him. 
I want to say something, and I want you to understand how I'm saying it, not misinterpret what I'm saying. Jesus said, because I go to the Father, greater works shall you do. He also said, Father, I've given the, the glory that I had with you at the beginning. Now, Daniel prophesied the people that know God will be great and do exploits. Jesus said, greater works than I did, you will do. Is it wrong then for us to understand that with the spirit of the living God on the inside of us, we should expect to cast out devil, heal the sick, speak with new tongues, raise the dead. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. Um, it is a promise of God. It's not that we're anything of ourselves, but rather it is the promise of God to those who know him, to those who hear his voice. You know, if we're listening to what hirelings are saying, then the wolf will get us. Did you just hear what I said? We need to understand and hear from true men and women of God who speak the truth and speak it boldly. And then we'll know the Father's voice. And guess what? Then we'll be strong and do exploits. That's the promise of God. Okay. Now, I mentioned the end of the year. So let's go back to the first mention of the word year in the Bible. Because as the end of the year approaches and this final feast day of dedication, I want to understand what the Bible says about year. I'm sure you're not ready, because I wasn't ready. Uh -huh. You know, it's amazing to me, um, having walked with the Lord now nearly 47 years, served Him full-time 31 years, um, and did the work of an evangelist before that. Um, how much revelation comes from a simple delving into the Word. And getting back to the root of the word. Yes. And that that amazes. I, I trust it blesses you too. Yeah. Genesis chapter 7 and verse 11. In the 600th year of Noah's life, the second month, the 17th day of the month, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up, and the windows of heaven were opened, and the rain was upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights. So the first mention of the word year is in the year of the flood. The flood came because of the wickedness of men upon the earth. Now those of us who understand end time prophecy, those of us who know it's not the end of the age, I mean at the end of the world, but rather the end of the age, um, we anticipate that there's a judgment coming. And it's not going to be water this time. Hello? Yes. Okay, so when we talk about year, it is the Hebrew word Shana. And the root word is also Shana, but it's a little deep. So, Shana means a revolution of time, one full year, one revolution of time. But the root gives us a little better understanding in the Hebrew. It means to duplicate or repeat or return, or do the second time. Huh. Conversely, there's an alternate meaning. It means to transmute, to alter, to change, to diverse, or to do over. How many of you have often wished in your life you could have a do-over for something that you messed up? <laughs> Amen. Yes. The term year the revolution of time gives us the opportunity to do over, mm. to alter, to transmute, to make diverse. Mm. You know Pastor Ken's definition of insanity, right? <laughs> Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. Mm. Let's determine as believers that this year we're going to do over. This year we're going to trans mute, we're going to change, we're going to alter our destiny by altering our word and altering what we do. Mm -hmm. Sila. So mm -hmm. before we go any further, let me do what I've done in the Zah and take the um, Hebrew root 
the pictographic root of the word yeah. Shana. Yeah. And it is Shin Nun Hei. Shin Nun Hei. And so again, if you read left to right, as opposed to how we read, uh, here's what we're seeing. We're seeing the whole, the air consumed, air to the throne in Jesus, or behold the air, the El Shaddai. Mm -hmm. wow. Now, can I suggest to you that both machines are important to us here? Because the air to the throne was consumed by the cross that our sins might be forgiven. Yes. This is what we just read in John chapter 10, from laying my life down for the sheep. Yes, yes. That's why the air was consumed. But having to consume, he then rose from the dead yes, yes. of his own power, proving that he is below the heir yes. to the throne, the El Shaddai, yes. the Almighty God. Yes, hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Is that not an incredible word? The word always connects. Yes. Always connects. Which Thank brings us back to dedication. I'm blessed to see so many people online loving this word because I'm loving this word. Let's go to 2 Chronicles chapter 2. Now we already know that Jesus was at the feast of dedication, so he was honoring the feast by being there. For those of you who don't know the story, before we read in 2 Chronicles, let me go over the story, which I said... You can find it in Maccabees. If you don't have an Apocrypha, I encourage you to get one. I'm not saying it's um, oh uh, inspired scripture on the same level as the rest of scripture, but I am saying there are historical accuracies that are found in the Apocrypha that confirm scripture, and uh, we would do well to understand what they say. In fact, Amen. the late Jan Crouch used to read a, a portion of the Apocrypha because it clearly referred to Jesus. So I can't wait to uh, find that in my own studies, and I'll be happy as the Lord allows to bring it forth. But here's what happened. Antiochus Epiphanes forced the Jews to worship the Greek gods. Mm -hmm. And um, there was a great slaughter about those who would not worship the Greek gods. There is now a great slaughter on Christians for those who will not bow the knee to the Muslim God, Allah. And um, yeah. and that is a horrible thing in our day. And one of the reasons why I'm calling for this special Thanksgiving uh, celebration to confess our sins and thank God for the freedom we still have yeah. and then to use that freedom as the mighty people of God. Anyway, Antiochus of Tiffany's apparently then slaughtered a pig, put his blood in the temple in the holy place, and put the pigs blood also on the scriptures yes. in order to pollute them. Can I suggest that there are people today that are polluting the scripture with an ungodly sacrifice, just like the sons of Aaron who burned strange fire before the Lord? Yes. Are you understanding the significance of how important it is for those of us who are called of God to preach the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Amen. Amen. If we are preaching things to scratch your ears, I dare say we are in danger of hellfire. And I say that word as a challenge to any preachers who might be listening. Because I'm telling you, we live in perilous times, and there are as much, much, much pulpits of America and pulpits more in America, I think, than anywhere else, but in pulpits of America and around the world, that is not gospel. Mm. That is not the word of God and is being brought forth by hiring. So anyway, Antiochus Epiphany did this. The Maccabees said enough. They raised a small army of brave warriors in order to take back the temple. They got the temple back. They defeated the enemy. And they wanted to cleanse and rededicate the temple to Almighty God. But when they did, they found they did not have enough oil for the days of the feast. And God miraculously allowed the oil to last for the full eight days. And 
Thus, the Feast of Rededication, or the Feast of Dedication, as it says in the New Testament. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. Yes. Which brings us to the very next scripture God laid on my heart. It's found in 2 Chronicles chapter 2. David wanted to build the temple, but God told him, you won't build it because your hands are stained with blood, but your son will build it. Mm. So in verse 4, we read, Behold, I build a house to the name of the Lord my God, to dedicate it to him, there's that term, dedicate, and to burn before him sweet incense, and for the continual showbread, and for the burnt offerings morning and evening on the Sabbath, on the new moons, and on the solemn feast of the Lord our God. This is an ordinance forever to Israel. You know, um, the church would do well to return to understand the significance of the feast days falling on moons and not falling on a Gregorian uh, or Ju Julian calendar, Selah. Mm. And the house which I built is great, for great is our God above all gods. But who is able to build in the house, seeing the heaven and heavens of heavens cannot contain you? Who am I then that I should build in my house, save only to burn sacrifice before him? Listen to the significance. Solomon knows that God's ordained for him to build the temple. His father and mother have told him, when you sit on the throne, you're going to build the house of the Lord. But he also has the wisdom to acknowledge God cannot be contained in a building made by human hands. Remember that when we go a little bit further. Send me now therefore a man cunning to work in gold and silver and in brass and in iron and in purple and in crimson and in blue and that can skill to grave with the cunning men that are with me in Judah and in Jerusalem, whom David my father did provide. Send me also cedar trees, fir trees, alpine trees, out of Lebanon, for I know that thy servants can skill to cut timber in Lebanon. Behold, my servant shall be with thy servant, even to prepare me too in abundance, for the house which I am about to build shall be wonderful great. He acknowledges the importance of the house he's building, but he's already said it's simply to have a place to do the sacrifice. Again, see now on that, we're coming to a very pivotal turning point. And behold, I will give to thy servants the hewers that cut timber, 20,000 measures of wheat, 20,000 measures of barley, 20,000 baths of iron, 20,000 baths of oil. He's basically saying, I'll take care of the provision for all the servants that you send. You won't have to provide for them. Then Hiram, the king of Tyre, answered in writing, which he said to Solomon, Behold, the Lord hath loved his people and hath made thee king of them. Mm. You know, I, I used wow. to love the, the late Bishop Will um, Kenley because he was the one that first told me the reality that the people of Tyre were people of color. And uh, Tyre Sid was basically a, a, a black area. Very, very significant when you understand the role that they had in helping build the temple of God. Hiram said, moreover, blessed be the Lord God of Israel that hath made heaven and earth. What he's saying is we acknowledge the God of the universe. Amazing. Mm -hmm. I wish that our leaders and rulers of this generation would learn to acknowledge the God of the universe. Yes, acknowledge him. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel that made heaven and earth to have given David to David, the king, a wise son, endued with prudence and understanding that might build a house for the Lord and a house for his kingdom. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're waiting for the kingdom. The Jews kept asking Jesus, will you establish the kingdom? Jesus' response was, the kingdom of God does not come with observation. But he didn't stop there. What else did he say? Kingdom the kingdom of God, of God is near you, and the kingdom of God shall be in you. In you. Yes. The people that know their God will have the kingdom of God on the inside of them. Oh, y'all didn't get that. Yes. Yes. See, that goes right back to what I was saying a little while ago. We're to do greater works. How can we do the greater works? 
except the kingdom of God be on the inside of us. Yes, yes. I remember when we started teaching, and, and Sister Debbie was always one of the teachers of our children, and we refused to bring the children anywhere other than to the Word of God. We didn't want them doing coloring books and all of that. That's all well and good. It has its place. It's wonderful that they learned those skills. But we wanted the children taught the Word of God on their level. And for those of you watching on Periscope, you wouldn't know this. Those who are in the house uh, will remember these events because they were there. Uh, one day, uh, a, a serpent, a rather large serpent, scaled the wall on the back of the building we were in down in Snow Valley Campground and came back into the children's church. And the children prayed that beast right out of there. Prayed, and that thing left, and it ended up on the wicked landlord's desk. <laughs> and when he returned to his office that Monday, there was this huge serpent coiled on his desk. Wow. As I recall, he shot and killed the thing, but he never went back to his office again. <laughs> but those children started to pray, and they would go home and pray when Mama was sick or Grandma was sick, and we'd get the praise reports. And the way they learned to pray was in the faith of a child. And here, Hiram, the king of Tyre is acknowledging the wisdom, the understanding of God that would build a house for his people through Solomon. Now, without turning here, I'm wondering how many in the house will know what's the very next scripture that we should relate to on this dedication. Anybody guess? Second Chronicles 7, 14. They dedicated the temple, and God spoke to Solomon and said, All right, you've dedicated this place. If my people, yes. who are called by my name, yes. will humble themselves, turn from their wicked ways, seek my face, then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. But he doesn't stop there. He says, my ears will be attentive to the prayer that's offered in this place. Yes. Yes. I shall be open. My ears attend. Yes. Is that not a powerful understanding yes. Yes. of the Jesus. beast of dedication? Now get ready. Because you're not ready for what's coming next. I guarantee you're not ready for what's coming next. Uh -oh. Turn to 1 Peter. 1 <laughs> Peter. Hallelujah. <laughs> Y'all getting something out of this today? I see the people yeah. on mine. Or I'm Amen. getting little hearts floating up. All kinds of signs that they're really rejoicing in the word. God bless you people who watch by Periscope. Uh, this will be posted on our website later. It will be posted on Facebook so that you can share with others the word of the Lord. I don't want to see the word of the Lord boxed in. I want to see the word of the Lord spread far and wide. Yes. Last week we had something from India. Before that we had someone from uh, Russia. Yes. Uh, we're getting, we're reaching out to the word world thanks to this thing called the internet. God bless you, Father, yes. for giving us provision. First Peter chapter two. Now we're going to begin at the beginning because I want to set the stage, and I want to set it based on Second Chronicles. 714, which we just quoted. And the saints at Everlasting Covenant should be able to quote that scripture from memory. Hallelujah. Wherefore, no, wait a minute. Let me go to chapter 1, the last verse. The word of the Lord endureth forever, and this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. So this is about the word. And you know my love of the word and my desire to get the word out there. Wherefore, in other words, because of the word of God being preached as the gospel throughout the world, and specifically to you as individuals, yes. wherefore laying aside all malice, and all doubt, and hypocrisy, and envies, all evil speaking, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. God intends his word for us to come to maturity. You know... The Bible promises 
that the fivefold, so-called, and you know I don't like the term because I think it, it's uh, a little bit limiting, but the so-called fivefold pastors, teachers, evangelists, prophets, and apostles were to equip the saints to do the work of the ministry until what? Until we all come to the knowledge of God, to the measure of the fullness of the stature of Christ, yes. and unto the unity of the faith. Oh, I hope you're getting this. So when we're babes, we desire that so we can grow to the unity of the faith and we can grow to the measure of the fullness of the stature of Christ. What's the measure of the fullness of the stature of Christ if it's not walking in the Word? I remember when God called us to full-time ministry. And I remember seeking the Lord and I said, you know, because all I ever wanted to be was a pilot. That's the truth. And uh, God gave me that, and I loved it. And um, I, I tell people all the time, I didn't go into ministry because I wasn't a good pilot. I, I loved flying, and I was an excellent pilot. But when God calls you, you can either obey, and you can end up in the belly of a fish. I didn't want to do the latter, so I decided to obey. All right? So we desire the milk so that we can grow into that fullness of measure. And I ask the Lord, if you're truly calling me, let us be a New Testament church. Let us see miracles, signs, and wonders. Those of you who are on Periscope, you may not know this about us, but our ministry has been known for miracles from the beginning until now. In fact, to this day, I get prayer requests from people that no longer walk with us because they know the anointing uh, on prayer produces results. Hmm. And so they'll call me, they'll email me, They'll text message me, they'll Facebook me, and they'll say, Pastor, please pray for this. Because they're getting the prayers answered. That's not to build everlasting covenant up. That's not to build me up. Remember, if my people, this is for all of us yes. who come to maturity, all of us who grow, all of us who love his word, these signs shall follow them that believe. Are you a believer today? These signs shall follow them that believe. They'll lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. They'll cast out devils. They'll speak with new tongues. They'll raise the dead. Are you getting a picture here? That means the kingdom has come. Let's go on. If so be, you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Once you're born again for real, you know the Lord is gracious. Once you know him in the pardoning of your sin, you know that he's gracious. Once you've experienced the Holy Spirit, mm. you know that the Lord is gracious. Amen. And you know that he's good. Hallelujah. That's why we say as believers, the Lord is good all the time. Yes. And all the time, the Lord is good. Yes. To whom coming as unto a living stone, disallow Indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Ye also as lively, or same word, living stones, are built up. You know, let me pause here and interject this. Sometimes the translators of what we call the King James Bible were so awestruck by who God was as revealed in the scripture that when there were things like this that pointed first to Jesus, the living stone, and then the same word applied to believers, they tried to find another word to use. For example, God has made them a little lower than the angels. That's another word, because the word there is Elohim. So God has made man a little lower than Elohim. Did you get that? Mm -hmm. So here, Jesus is the living stone who was disavowed, but chosen and precious. And ye also are living stones. Hallelujah. I want you to think about that. The dead cannot praise him. Mm -hmm. Sorry. The dead cannot represent him. We are called to be living stones, built up a spiritual house, 
of the holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Yes. There it is. It, there's, I, I can close the book at this point. Because that's what we're getting at for this Thanksgiving and this Feast of Dedication. Mm -hmm. That we understand who we are to be as living stones. Look down at verse 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Hallelujah. The glory of the light is upon us. Hallelujah. Which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which yes. had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Hallelujah. And then Peter goes on again and said, Don't do the things you used to do. Abstain from fleshly lust. Get close to the Lord. Here's the point. Solomon dedicated a physical building as a place for the sacrifices to be made. Mm -hmm. Now where is that building? Here's the thing. We are to be living stones built together into a holy house, the ecclesia, not a church building, but living stones unified, unified as one in Mashiach, in Messiah, in Yahweh whatever your understanding of the pronunciation may be. We are to be living stones, showing forth the praises of God. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. I, uh, Thank you, I want to pause before I close the pray and do the things we do, and I want to remind you that are watching by Periscope, um, first of all, we will have a time of prayer. If you want those prayers to be lifted up, don't hesitate. I don't know how you type on those things, but I see the little messages come from time to time. And, uh, and I appreciate all of the comments and all of the people who have joined us. Um, also, let me, let me add before I forget, because I forget just like I used to way back at Snow Valley, um, you can correspond with us either online uh, through our website, uh, everlastingcovenant.wix.com forward slash the shroud, um, or uh, go to our Facebook page. You can reach us there at End Time School. Um, and, and here's the thing. Here's the thing. I really am hurt by the things I see going on in our nation at this point in time. Um, and that's, I'm not making a political statement. I, it's not about politics. If you watch my message last week, I made it clear that it's pivotal that we don't look to the government of men. Yes, I will pray for healing in your body. Um, we don't look to the government of men. We look to the kingdom of God. The book of Hebrews, Paul says, we're looking for a city whose builder, builder and maker is God. That's what Abraham was doing. That's how we walk in faith. There is a new Jerusalem. It's coming. And it's made of living stones. That means us. I don't want to get that either. <laughs> See, if we're to be caught up to be with the Lord in the air... And then that new Jerusalem is to come down from the air. I think we're talking about the same building, amen? Yes. yes. Hallelujah. So very, very, very important. Mm. Thank God. Dear Jesus. Hallelujah. So I want people, God, this Thanksgiving and this is the dedication to take this message to heart as forgiveness for all the unconfessed sins of our nation, and they are men. Want to talk about racism? It's a sin. Yeah. Want to talk about child murder? It's a sin. Want to talk about perversion? It's a sin. Yes. Want to talk about alternate lifestyles? It's a sin. I know that's not politically correct, but I'm preaching the truth. Mm -hmm. 
and I know I have to stand and answer for what I preach, but you also have to stand and answer for what you do. Yes. So if the word is brought to you and you reject the word, it's on you, not on me. Sila, pause and calmly think about that for a minute. I, I've said this many times as well. I'm not phobic in any set, uh, sense of the imagination. I'm not a homophobe. I'm not an Islamophobe. I'm not a, any kind of phobe. But I am an equal opportunity bigot when it comes to sin. Lying is sin. Envy is sin. Jealousy is sin. The list of sins is legion. The question is, are we going to turn from our wicked ways to serve the true and the living God? Yes. Are we going to humble ourselves to seek his face? Are we going to open ourselves to become the living tabernacle? And that's what I want to come from this message. A living tabernacle made of every race and tribe and tongue before the most high God. Because the book of Revelation says that's what we're going to look like. And I believe the, from cover to cover. Yes. I believe in cover because it says Holy Bible. So if this people are to be holy, then let's be holy. You know, there's a scripture in the Old Testament. I don't want to misquote, so I won't try to quote the chapter and verse, but you can find it. It says there's coming a time when even the bridles on the horse will be holiness to the Lord. Yes. Yes. How much more so the people of God should be holiness to the Lord. Did you get something out of this today? Hallelujah. 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 Father, I do want to pray for that, that individual who needs healing in the body. And um, I didn't catch your name. I'm going to pray for Susan and her foster children who lost the Denora, who lost her father. Lord God, you know all these needs. You know their name. You know where they are. You know they're rising up. They're sitting down. You know them because you knew them before they were formed in their mother's womb. I'm praying for Andrea that healing would come to her body. Andrea, I just want you to stretch your hands to the Lord right now. We are in agreeing prayer. Yes. There's no time, space, or distance with God. Thank you, Jesus. And there is no respect for a person with God. So we, oh, therefore, yeah. by faith, send the word of the living God to Andrea, to Sarah, yes. to Denora, to all of these who have asked for prayer. We send the word of the living God for healing, for deliverance, for peace, for restoration. We send the word of the living God because his word will never return to him void, but accomplish in our earth the thing that he set it out to do. So if you are watching, listening, agreeing in prayer with this, then beat your hands in a todah, yada worship unto the Lord, in an adoration Hallelujah. unto the or acknowledging yes. that Hallelujah. you speak of the Thank you, Lord, Jesus. the God of the universe, Thank that you Lord. might receive the Hallelujah. blessing that you have need of. Thank if you, you have Jesus. a blessing, lift your hands to the thank Lord and you, thank God. Him, Hallelujah. calling those things that be not as though they already were. Thank you, Lord. Abraham believed God when his wife's womb Hallelujah. was dead Hallelujah. and his own Hallelujah. body was dead. He believed God to you conceive. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. What medical Hallelujah. people would say is impossible. For with the God we serve, all things are possible. Yes, Hallelujah. Thank and you, O Lord. Jesus declared, Thank you, O Lord. All oh God. things are possible to him that be believe. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Thank you, Lord. Worship him. Thank you. And receive. Hallelujah. Receive Thank your deliverance. Receive Thank your restoration. Receive Hallelujah. your you're worthy, O oh God. All our thanks and praise. Hallelujah. And then you invite us and let us know what God did. Yes, hallelujah. I, I, uh, Thank you, Jesus. I will share this because I don't know who all compares with us. Everybody at the church home knows this. Some of you who have chimed in may know this because you know the ministry. From the beginning of this ministry, I believe God for miracles. Not because of who I am, nor because of anything I've done, but because of who He is, and because all of His promises are yes and amen. Thank you, Lord. All of His promises are yes and in Him, amen. There's no shadow of turning with Him to whom we have 
believe to him who has called us to his service. And so I will never forget going to Guyana on the mission field the very first time and being handed a child who I thought to be a few months old, a child who had a hole in his heart, a child whose digestive system didn't work or didn't function, a child who was actually a year old at the time that I held him, a child who the doctor said didn't have much a chance at life, at best a 50-50 chance of making it. And I prayed for that child. I, that, that child is my first child, and I prayed and I prayed. And, but the last thing I remember doing as I gave the mother a, a cloth to wrap the child in, I remember saying to the mother, here's my address. Write me and tell me what God has done. Now I say that because there was a time when Jesus healed ten lepers. Only one came back to say thank you. Jesus said, we're not all ten healed. Where are the other nine? Mm. It encourages us to know when God has blessed you, healed you, touched you, delivered you, it encourages us in ministry. So don't hesitate to write me. Our PO box is 155 Christmas, Florida. That's box 155 Christmas, Florida, zip code 327 3209. And I'm going to figure out a way to put this up on the screen as soon as I learn how to work this periscope. So we have now prayed. Let's pray for your tithes, gifts, and offering. And those of you who are watching by virtue of the internet, please slip us a gift and let us know that God has blessed you. And uh, and he bless you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Very good. Thank you, Brother Kurt. Box 155, Christmas, Florida, 32709. It's on the screen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And now I'm going to ask for a special I'm going to ask that you, for us that the next time I come to you, it won't have to be in a vehicle. But we'll have a place to do it and to share the because it will be so much easier. I mean, I don't mind using a vehicle if that's what I have to use, and I will. But I believe in God for something better, and I ask you to agree with this. Father, I thank and praise you for the tithes, gifts, and offerings of your people. I praise you, Lord, for those who are watching by the Internet that will sow a seed. And I thank you and praise you for what you're doing in each and every life. And I pray that this word spoken today would not return to you void, but accomplish in every heart and heard what you set it out to do. You. That your people would celebrate with a sacrifice of praise this Thanksgiving. That they would humble themselves and pray and confess the sins of our nation, that our nation too might be healed. In preparation for a rededication of their very lives, and portions unto you on the festival of lights. This we ask in Jesus' name, and all who agreed said. Amen. 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 God bless you. The Lord bless you. As you're dismissed, the angels of the Lord go before you Thank and you. be a rear guard unto you. Bless and prosper you in the way that you should go. Bless the work of your hands and all that you do. Thank you. The Lord show himself gracious unto you. Thank in the precious name of Jesus. And all who agreed said, Amen. 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 God bless you. Lord willing, we'll see you next week. You have something, sister? Man? No, I was I was just waving. <laughs> <laughs> just waving. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm waving right back and I'm waving to you online as well. <laughs> Thank you.